Okay, so this is the situation that I'm attempting to fix. This is my five-year-old's bed. She's on the bottom bunk. Her sister, who's eight, is on the top bunk. This is the Ikea bed. I don't remember the name, but we painted it and added some details to make it a little more girly. But it's really hard to make. There's like almost no space between the mattress and the wood frame part around the bed. And my five-year-old is quite the perfectionist and she does not like it when her bed is not made neatly, but also it's just really beyond her skill level at this point to, um, to get a nice smoothly made bed. So hopefully we'll fix that today. So we have the fitted sheet on the mattress and I put, I had my husband put the mattress across my queen bed. That way I can access it while I'm standing up, um, not be crouched over hurting my back all day. So now I'm going to determine um, how I want to lay the blanket. So that'll be the next step. Uh, the next thing I did was I took the quilt and I laid it right side down. So this is actually that solid pink fabric is actually the underside of the quilt. Um, so I laid it with the wrong side up and then I took just regular chalk that my kids use when they're drawing and I traced um, I pretty much just followed, you can see here, I pretty much followed the, uh, the line of the piping on the mattress itself. I just felt it with my finger and then I used chalk and I drew that line the whole way down both sides of the mattress. Sorry, my room's a mess here. I'm in the midst of organizing closets today too. And then across the bottom where I'm not cutting, I just drew a dotted line just so I would know where the bottom of the mattress uh, ends. Um, but I made it dotted so that I wouldn't forget what I'm doing and cut there. And then what you wanna do is don't forget about seam allowance. So don't cut on that chalk line. That is not your cutting line, that is your sewing line. So whatever seam allowance you feel you need, I've got a pretty um, thin, lightweight quilt here, which I think is gonna be perfect for this project. So I'm. I'm debating. I'm probably only going to give myself a half inch seam allowance. Um, if I had bought this blanket with this project in mind, I probably would have gotten a full size quilt rather than a twin size. That way I would have extra um, material to play with. But since I don't, I don't want to make my seam allowances too generous here. So I'm thinking probably just a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to cut half an inch outside of that white chalk line from the head of the bed here all the way down to the foot of the bed and stop and then I'm going to do the same thing I have a chalk line well yeah I'm tripping over the stuff I need to organize here um I did the same thing on this side of the bed and I'm going to cut again just outside of that line about a half an inch the whole way down to the bottom of that solid line and then stop and then I'm going to pin my seams together but first I'm going to make my cuts and hopefully not accidentally cut the fitted sheet or the mattress underneath and then I'll show you how I'm going to pin and I think I'm going to add a ruffle as well to hide the zipper later so that's the next step okay so I cut down the side of the mattress just about a half inch outside of my chalk line. Um, and I have some really great scissors that I wanted to show you in case you're thinking, what kind of scissors should I use to cut through a quilt? I have had these for, oh my goodness, 17, 18 years. I don't think I've ever had them sharpened, maybe once during that time, but I also only use them for fabric. So um, if you wanna keep your sewing scissors nice and sharp, don't use them on paper. Don't use them on even batting. Um, there's a little bit of batting in this, but I think it's cotton batting. I think it's cotton batting, which is hopefully a little better. But um, anyway, these are Fiskars razor edged. You can probably get them on Amazon or at Joann's and they are spring loaded. So try and do this. You pull back here and they pop open and you go like this when you want to cut. 
Well, it looks like a bird's face there. With that screw right there. Anyway, um, yeah, these are really good scissors. I like them a lot. I use them all the time. And they cut through this quilt no problem at all. So that's one thing I wanted to show you. The other thing is this ruffle that I'm going to be using here. Originally, I was thinking that I would need a ruffle to hide the zipper. Get that in focus if I can. Yeah, the, that I would need that ruffle to hide the zipper. The more I thought about it, the more I'm thinking I probably don't. And I would personally prefer the look of it more without the ruffle, but my daughter was really excited picking out this ruffle at the store the other day. So we're going to go ahead and use it because I think she'll be disappointed if I don't. And then you're going to need um, just some pins. I have these ones with the yellow head here are upholstery, so they're extra long. So I'm thinking those will probably be pretty good for this project, but you can use whatever kind of straight pins you have on hand. So now I'm going to take this part here and this part, and I am going to insert the ruffle in between the layers. I have to stop and think for a minute to make sure that I don't pin it the wrong way. So once I figure that out, I will show you. And then I'm going to pin it together um, without the zipper at this point so that I know exactly where to sew. And after I have sewn down the length of it, securing the, the ruffle in place, then I will show you how, um, well, I think I'll go on to the next step yet. I don't think I'm going to do the zipper right away. But anyway, I'm going to pin the ruffle in place, <laughs> pin this seam together, and then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so I pinned the ruffle and I changed my plan slightly and I decided to, I'm going to sew the ruffle on to um, the top of the bedspread first before attaching the side piece. I tried pinning it all together because that would be possible, but this piece kept stretching and my pieces weren't lining up to be the same length, even though they are the same length because they were all cut from the same bedspread. But it's possible that I might have to do like a little budging here and there to make this piece match up perfectly with this piece. And I just decided I didn't want to have a ruffle in the way while I was trying to figure that out. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the ruffle to the top. I have the right side of the ruffle and the right side of the quilt facing each other. And then I also folded over the edge of the ruffle so that I'm getting a little bit of like a miter corner here. That way you don't see the raw edges. Did I put those? The raw edges from, um, yeah, there's the raw edges of the top of the ruffle. They'll now be neatly tucked inside the seams. So you don't have to worry about those pieces fraying and being visible in your finished product. So now I'm going to go ahead and I will sew that ruffle the whole way down to the bottom on each side. And then I will attach the side piece to the bedspread. Okay, so I am now sewing the ruffle onto the top portion of my bedspread. And I probably should have pinned on the other side so that the pins were on this side. So now I'm just gonna reach under and pull out my pins as I go, but that should work okay. I really wanted to sew on my chalk line just to make sure that I got the ruffle on really nice and straight. You could sew it from the other side but I, I feel like it's gonna go easier for me if I use that chalk line. So that's what I'm doing now. And I've got um, the rest of the bedspread up on my sewing table so that the weight of it doesn't pull like this on my stitches, which can make it um, a little frustrating. I'm using um, like a small to medium st length stitch on my machine and just using like an all purpose thread and my walking foot, which I don't know if you can really see here, but the walking foot should keep the pieces um, from slipping away from each other. It should help keep that ruffle exactly in place as I sew. And sometimes you can get where one piece of fabric gets pulled on more tightly than the other piece of fabric, and then you get to the end and the pieces don't match up the way they're supposed to. So a walking foot will help prevent that happening. And hopefully, Hopefully that all works out okay, we'll see. I really like this machine. It's the Project Runway Limited Edition from Brother. I've had it for, oh goodness, almost nine years. 
and I've had it serviced a couple times, cleaned a couple times, but it's going really, it, it works really well. And I think Amazon still carries it, probably an updated version of it, but it's been a good, a good machine with options, but not like so many options that I get confused and don't use them. It's, it's got stitches that are actually helpful to me and that I, that I use pretty frequently. So I'm going to sew on the ruffle on both sides of the, the quilt, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so took a dinner break and I'm back. I sewed the ruffle onto the top piece of the quilt on each side, and I just finished pinning the first side piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get a close up here so you can see how I did it. I've got the upholstery pins. If you can see from the side here, I basically can made a, a quilt sandwich. The right, right sides of the quilt are together. And then this ruffle, which I think is really optional. Um, the right side of the ruffle is facing the top piece of the quilt. So I pinned it the whole way down. And I think when I sew it, I'm going to make sure that I start at the top of the blanket and sew down to the end because this side piece here, because it no longer has any bias tape holding it together, it keeps wanting to stretch on me. And I think there's a possibility, hopefully not, but when I get to the end, um, I may have to do a little bit of fiddling to make it um, meet up. And I'd rather have that be at the bottom where I'm gonna hide it when I sew the corner later than to have it up at the top and have the side piece potentially coming up higher than the top piece. So that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to sew it. And then after I've sewed <clears throat> this side and the other side, then I will show you how I'm going to add the zipper. Okay, so I'm getting ready to start sewing my top piece of the quilt to the first side piece with that ruffle sandwiched in between. And this time I'm going to be using a much larger basting stitch on my machine. I've got it set at um, a five, which is my longest stitch length. And then um, the reason I'm going to do that is because we're actually going to be ripping this seam out after we insert the zipper. And I'm also not back stitching because again, I'm ripping it out. It's just really in there um, just as a placeholder to, to make sure that the zipper goes in evenly on both sides. So I'm going to sew on that chalk line again that I had sewn. In fact, I really don't even need to worry about seeing, let me see if I can focus. I don't even need to worry about that chalk line anymore because I already have um, a stitch line. You can see it right there from where I attached the ruffle earlier. So I'm just going to go on top of that same um, line of stitching as I used when I attached the ruffle. And then that um, the seam we're putting in right now will get ripped out later. So I'm not I'm not too worried about it looking particular. Just want it to be even. Another little tip um, in this situation, I kind of worked myself into a predicament where I wanted to sew on top of that stitch line that I had made, like I showed you before, from where I attached the ruffle. But this time, if I wanted to do that, starting at the top of my quilt down to the bottom of the quilt, I would have to have the bulky side of my blanket right here where um, the base of my sewing machine is. And so I don't have all of that free space to just let it hang off to the side. So in that case, um, when you have a situation like that, take your blanket or whatever it is you're sewing and roll it tightly like a hot dog or like a Swiss roll. And then it should fit, hopefully, through um, the empty space uh, beneath the arm of your machine. So, or I don't know if that's called the arm, but whatever this part is up here, you should be able to fit it through this opening. Unless you have a long arm machine, which would be wonderful, but I don't. So this will um, let me let me sew, but still see my stitch line from earlier. Okay, so I have the side pieces sewn to the top piece with the ruffle in between. And this is exciting. I can kind of see what the finished product is going to look like. I still need to add the zippers. I need to 
come around down here on the end and I'm going to um, take the excess fabric out of the corner. And so that, let's see if I can do this with one hand, I'm going to sew, pull it like this and then sew down this line right here, but I'll do that later. Um, the next thing I wanna do is add the zippers. And I'm kind of fiddling with it right now. Let's see exactly how I want to do that. I've got this long zipper, it's ivory colored. That was the only color I could find in a 72 inch zipper. I probably could have gone with a 60 inch. It wouldn't have come the whole way to the end of the bed. It would have come within about 10 or 12 inches, but um, for the price, it was actually cheaper to get the 72 inch one. So I have, um, I think this is considered an upholstery zipper. The package of the other one, cause I had it, I have two. It's from Dritz and it's a nylon zipper, I believe. And it is attached on the end. It's not like the kind of unattached zipper that you would use for a coat. Um, this one stays closed at the bottom, which is what I wanted. You could also buy zipper by the yard, but I've never used that before. And I didn't want to try for the first time with this big of a project, just in case there was any learning curve involved. So I just went ahead and bought this from Amazon. It was actually a pack of two, which was perfect. And so I'm going to take the underside here. If I can do this with one hand while I talk and film. But what I'm going to do is open my seam and I have to fiddle with it. A oh, there's a pin in there. I have to fiddle with it a little bit to make sure that I have the ruffling the right way so that that doesn't get in the way. Actually, my mom's here today and I had her come upstairs and look at this to tell me that I was doing it right because I was staring at it so much I wasn't even sure what I was doing anymore. So what I'm going to do though, this is the top of the blanket right here. I'm going to open my seam and I'm going to lay my zipper down the middle of that open seam. I'm going to pin it the whole way down and then I'm going to sew it down this side and down this side through the blanket. And then what I'm going to do is open up that seam that I just made to sew these two pieces together. And then it will give me, hopefully, a perfectly sewn zipper that has um, some extra fabric covering um, the space in between. Not really sure how else to explain that, but I will pin it and then I will film again so you can see what it looks like pinned. So I've started pinning my zipper. I've actually already sewn the first zipper and it took a little playing around with. And I think I'm gonna have to go back through and hand stitch a couple of areas just to make sure it's really easy for my daughter to zip and unzip. But the good news is I think I learned what I did wrong on this first zipper so that I shouldn't have that issue on the other side. It should go together smoothly. Hopefully not need any hand stitching to finish it off. So let me show you what I'm doing here. So I took, um, this is the side piece of the quilt. This is the top piece right here that goes across the top of the mattress. And I have um, pinned the ruffle over so that it faces the top piece. And I'm going to sew the side of the zipper that is attached to the short side piece first. So I'm just kind of keeping that ruffle out of the way. I don't want to sew through the ruffle at all on either side when I'm attaching the zipper. Um, so I'm just going to sew through the side piece of the quilt and the zipper. And so I'm going to pin it and I'm going to sew as close to the zipper as I can. You can use a zipper foot for this step, make it a little easier, but you could get away with a walking foot too. I'm going to sew down the whole length of the zipper down to the end. We will backstitch for this because this is the seam that's going to hold the zipper in place. Um, and then we'll come back, pin the ruffle the other way. So it's coming this direction. And then I will sew the other side of the zipper. Same thing, whole way down with the zipper foot down to the bottom. And then, um, then we'll have like the raw edges here. So we can either just leave it like that, or we can sew a second time on the edge to kind of kind of almost use the zipper tape as like a bias tape and hold the raw edges inside. That's what I did on 
the other zipper over here. And it was an extra step, but I like the way it finished things off. You can see my stitching. So I have the stitch that comes up alongside the zipper nice and tight. It's a little wonky because <laughs> I was I was figuring this out as I went. But then I did a second seam right here that way. My kid can't pick at it and get to the the raw edges. So that worked out well. So I think that's what I'm going to do here, but you could also just leave it raw edges or you could come back through with um, just the needle and thread and just like whip stitch it the whole way down the side. So I'm going to sew this side of the zipper first, then I'll sew this side of the zipper. And then I think I'm going to sew them both a second time right on the edge of the zipper tape just to encase those raw edges. And then when I've done those steps, so that's four, four times down the length of this seam, which probably take me a little while, but I think it'll be worth it. Then I'll show you how I'm going to use my seam ripper to open up the zipper and um, get that nice finished look. Okay, so I have finished sewing the zipper on the second side of my quilt. So I already did the first zipper, which I did not film. This is the second zipper. Um, and it's all finished being sewn in place. You can see I sewed it on either side of the actual like zipper teeth that are in there. And then I sewed it again on the outer sides to conceal all of the raw edges of the quilt. So once you've done that, then you're going to want to flip your quilt over and find, um, push your ruffle towards the top part of the quilt. This is my short piece that goes on the side. This is the top piece that goes across the top of the mattress. So push the ruffle over to the side if you did a ruffle. And now you're going to need your seam ripper, which this is a seam ripper. And right there in the curve of the J part, it is sharp like a little knife. So we're going to do this, see if I can do this with one hand. You want to find, you can see, my basting stitch is already split up a little bit here at the top, but do you see those, let's see if I can focus better, see those threads that are holding it together? We want to rip those with the seam ripper. So, sorry, this is really awkward. I'm going to go like this. Rip through those threads, being careful not to rip the quilt itself. And that will start to open up the zipper. Okay, so once you do that, then we'll be able to zip our zipper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that not filming because apparently it takes two hands. I can't do it with just one hand. And then I will show you the finished product. So, yay! Both zippers are in. Um, I used the seam ripper to basically free both of the zippers so they're not. Um, hidden behind that basting stitch. So now, look, let's see if I can do it with one hand. Hopefully. Not it from this side. So look, this is how easy it's going to be to make the bed. Yay! So, I have a couple more steps I still need to do. I'm really glad those zippers are in. The ruffle definitely added an extra step. So, I think I'll be leaving that out next time if I can. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the quilt over and figure out how I want to do these corners here at the bottom. And I'll get those sewn. And then after that, I'm going to lay things out one more time and sandwich the flat sheet between the quilt and the fitted sheet. And then I'll figure out how I'm going to attach all three, which is the one part of this process that I'm not really sure how I'm going to do it. I have some ideas, but I'm going to have to play around with it a little bit. But there's a way. There's always a way. So that's what I'm doing next. Okay, so I have laid out the quilt again on the mattress and I flipped it over so that the right side is facing down on the mattress and the underside of the quilt is facing up. And I am marking my corners here. So I've got this extra fabric and I thought about just kind of like wrapping it around and tacking it in place, but then I just decided to go, go all out. Why not, right? And just mark with these pins. And then I also drew a chalk line 
Um, and that's where I'm going to be sewing. And then after I sew it, then I'm going to cut the excess off, probably about half an inch to an inch outside of my sewing line. But I just want to sew it first, make sure that I do it right before I go cutting away the extra. Um, so I'm going to do that on both of the end, the bottom corners here. I have the other one marked as well. And then we'll move on to sandwiching in that flat sheet. Okay, I'm excited because it's time to add the flat sheet. So I've got the fitted sheet still on the mattress. I laid out the flat sheet. The top is wrinkled, so it doesn't look even, but it is actually even. Um, make sure that you have the same amount of sheet on either side of the mattress. And then what I did was I decided to kind of do like a, a pleat here on the end. Thought about um, gathering it like a ruffle across the bottom to get all of that extra width um, to fit across just the top edge of the mattress, but it would be an extra step and I don't know if it would lay as smoothly. So instead I folded it over. I took the edge of the top sheet and I pinned it to the top corner of the mattress. Then I did the same thing over here on the other side and then I held it from the middle the whole way up and that was how I just kind of loosely determined two pleats. They're not exact but no one's going to see them so that's fine. And that way you still have the full width of the sheet so when you do unzip the blanket at night and sleep um, the sheet is is wide enough to go over a body and still come down to the sides. Um, so I decided to do that instead of trimming the sheet. So I felt like this is going to make for a more comfortable blanket to sleep with. So now I'm going to lay the quilt over top. And I'm going to very carefully pin through the quilt, through the top sheet, and through the fitted sheet. Being careful not to pin onto the mattress. So that might take me a few minutes. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to sew through all three layers right there across the bottom of the bed. Okay, so I still have the flat sheet laying on top of the mattress like I had just showed you and I went ahead and laid the quilt on top of that. I was all set to start pinning the bottom here so that I can sew a line right here and then the more I started thinking about it, the more I decided I it's just getting really bulky at this point because it's three layers and it's it's big. And the more, I don't know about you, but when I sew with something that has a lot of layers and a lot of pins, I get poked a lot by the pins. So I think instead what I'm going to do is just take some time and hand baste these layers together because I need to sew across here, but then the next step is going to be to sew all the way along here too. So what I'm thinking is maybe I'll just baste just underneath the zipper all the way down here, all the way across here, and then underneath the zipper on the other side. And then I also need to come back so that this extra quilt, um, the side piece is not just like a flap hanging. I want it to be um, connected to the fitted sheet underneath. I'm going to tuck the flat sheet up so that it's not in the way. Um, that's still going to be free. It's only going to be, the flat sheet's only going to be attached here at the bottom. But I'm going to come back and sew the bottom edge of the quilt to the fitted sheet only the whole way across the bottom too, um, just so that it's easy to take on and off and I don't have to tuck in that side piece when I'm doing it. So what I think I'm going to do is just take some time here, get some, probably some dark thread because this will get ripped out later. That'll make it easier to see. And I'm going to hand baste the whole way underneath the zipper around the mattress, across the sheets at the bottom, all the way up the other side of the mattress. And then I'm going to do a second line down the bottom edge of the quilt, across the very base of the mattress and then up the other side as well. And then I will take it to my sewing machine and sew on my basting uh, line 
but that way that way I can juggle all of this big very bulky it's like a laundry basket full of of blankets at this point um, and if I do that with pins I, I'm gonna regret it and I'm gonna bleed so I'm gonna do basting and I think that's gonna make it um, it'll still do the same job as the pins it'll keep the layers from shifting while I'm sewing but it will make it a little easier on me even though it might take a little more time than pinning it right now but um, of course when you're doing this step just you probably want to take your hand and put it um, up underneath the fitted sheet or put a piece of cardboard underneath the fitted sheet so that you don't baste or pin to the mattress you want to go through the layers of fabric but you don't want to go through um, the mattress obviously and like I said I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the fitted the flat sheet sorry the flat sheet attached at the bottom but I'm not I don't want it attached to the quilt or the fitted sheet anywhere else so I'm going to tuck that up in here like that so that when I do sew right here I'm connecting it just to the fitted sheet and then the same thing down here I'm just gonna and this is where I wish I had I wish I was working with a full size quilt to make a twin size zippered bedding because then I would wrap this down and underneath the mattress and probably figure out a way to attach it to the elastic that goes around um, the fitted sheet. But that's not what I'm working with. So I'm just going to have to improvise and I'll just do some stitching right here to attach it to the fitted sheet. But I don't want that flat sheet to get in there. So I'm going to tuck that up out of the way. I only want to sew through the flat sheet at the bottom of the mattress. So if that makes sense, that's my plan and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so I pinned all the way around just underneath the zipper. And then I also pinned across the foot of the bed and all the way up the other side, just underneath the zipper. I'll show you exactly where. Hard to see, but there's, there's the pins, and that's where I'm going to stitch. I'm going to stitch just below this line. That's where my zipper is attached. With those two seams, I'm going to sew. I don't know. I thought about trying to sew on that line again. I might, or I will just sew just below that. And that is going to sew directly onto the fitted sheet. The flat sheet is all tucked up in here so that it won't get caught in that seam except for at the bottom I'll be sewing you can see my pins right here I'll be sewing straight across the bottom at the foot of the bed and I do have the flat sheet the end of the flat sheet um, sandwiched in between the quilt and the fitted sheet right there in fact you can even see it hanging down there um, at the bottom so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to sew all the way around from here, down across the bottom, and up the other side. And then I'll probably put it back on the bed, make sure everything lines up. And then the last step will be to sew all the way down around the bottom edge of the quilt, across the bottom of the bed, and up the other side, um, just to make it one um, complete I don't know, unit, so that it should be, I, th I think doing that bottom seam, it, you could probably skip it, but I think it will make um, it easier to, just for me to put everything on and off the bed when I'm changing the sheets. So that's the next step. Just for a quick second here, I wanna show you how much fabric it is when you're sewing the final steps of this process together. I've got the quilt, the flat sheet, the fitted sheet, all together there on my machine. I've already sewn down one of the long sides. I'm almost done sewing across the very bottom of the quilt at the foot of the bed, and then I will turn around the corner and go up the last side. And I made sure um, I started at, like if you were looking at the bed from the ceiling, looking down at it, I started on the right hand side that way, again, all the short ends are on this side of the machine, and all of the, the larger, um, bulkier pieces are on this side, uh, just to make it a little easier. Okay, I am at the last step in the process. I am so excited. I sewed along 
um, just underneath the zipper. I did that the whole way down this side of the mattress. I went around, show you. I was able to do this in one continuous seam, which was awesome. Came down around this way. I can zoom in. You can just faintly see I sewed across the bottom there that connected the flat sheet. Oops, no, I already pinned that. I can't look that up for you. But anyway, I sewed all the way all the way across the bottom and then up the other side. It went really well. I think that was the part of this process I've been the most nervous about. Well, that and the next step. But um, it actually went really smoothly. Did it all in one continuous seam. Didn't catch any fabric that I wasn't supposed to catch. Um, didn't have to rip anything out. That was great. So then I came back and I pinned this edge right here the whole way around. I had enough fabric I could wrap it down underneath on this side and I pinned it just to the fitted sheet. So then what I'm going to do is take everything off the mattress one more time and I'm going to sew right above the pink bias tape edge on the blanket, but I'm going to sew through the quilt to the fitted sheet and that should make this one complete unit should be done at that point, minus a little bit of hand stitching that I need to do um, on the zippers. The zippers were the trickiest part for me. Not that they were difficult, but I think just having the batting, um, it's not very thick batting, but the cotton batting in the um, quilt just made um, everything around the zipper just a little bit more bulky. Not not so that it's bad. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but it just um, it's just a little more tricky to work with. And there were a couple of places where the fabric didn't catch the way it needed to. So I'm just gonna go back with a needle and thread and just touch up a couple of small areas. But I am almost there, and I am so excited. I'm hoping to get this done soon so that my daughter can use it tonight. Um, so I'm gonna go sew that last very very long seam the whole way around, and then I will put it back on the bed and show you how it works. So as you can see, the quilt is done now. I got both zippers installed. I got um, the quilt um, down on the bottom edge sewn to the fitted sheet. And it has been on our daughter's bed for about two weeks now and she is loving it. She was so excited um, when we got this put on her bed that she can make her bed on her own now. I did have to show her um, the steps to doing it like the first two or three times just because she wasn't really sure what she needed to do first as far as you know spreading out the sheet and how to get things zipped but since then she has been completely independent there's no more drama when she, it's time to make her bed she doesn't even complain when she's asked to do it she just runs off and does it because she knows she can do it quickly and independently so i'm going to show you how to unmake the bed when the child is getting ready for bed in the evening and then how easy it is to make the bed in the morning. As you can see, our daughter made her bed herself this morning and she has lots of stuffed animals and pillows that she loves to put on her bed. But um, we can get all of those off in a jiffy and then show you how, how everything works. Okay, so I've got all of her extra toys and pillows off of the bed at this point and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to unzip the blanket to get ready for bed at night. You just reach over here, get the back zipper, unzip it as far back as you would like, then get the front zipper and do the same thing. You can zip it the whole way down. Our daughter is only five and a half, so she doesn't need it. Unzip the whole way down. And then pull back the blankets, get your pillows set, and you're ready to go. Now, in the morning, when you want to make the bed, it's probably going to look something like this with pillows all over the place and maybe a few toys thrown in there too but that's okay it's really easy to make got her her pillowcase which I took some of that extra ruffle and just added it to the edge of the pillowcase just to make that a little more special to her, to her jammies back there you might want to actually take those off makes it a little easier to get the blanket the whole way to the top take off any extra toys spread out the sheet but it doesn't have to be perfect it will still look fine even if it's a little rumpled then we spread up the comforter quilt part 
that zipper. Here it is. Find that zipper. Zip that side. Next, we zip the front side. And those zippers, we have to cut the ruffle. Those zippers are working so nicely. They're really nice, smooth zippers. Put her pillows on. And mommy will make them out of the way. I let it made <laughs> before all the extra toys are added. There, we'll leave it. We'll leave it nice and plain and simple like this. How I prefer it, but I'll add the toys for in a second. And there you go. This has been such a huge help for those younger kids who just can't make the bed independently or a really difficult bed like this to make. Now it's still, um, you know, as difficult as it, as it would be to put a fitted sheet on it when my husband or I are getting the blankets onto the bed after they've been washed. But that, that's the only hassle that we have. And then it's good to go and just wash it as often as you would your sheets. It fits in the washing machine. I just have a standard washer. I don't have any kind of high capacity. I have an old fashioned top loader, um, but it's, it's working really well. And my other daughter wants me to make one for her bed now too. So um, they are time consuming to make, probably not very cost effective if you have to pay someone to make it for you plus buy the blankets. But if you're able to do it yourself or you have someone who will do it just because they love you, it's a really helpful project that I think will make your family's life easier. So thanks for watching my video and I'll put some of the links for the products that I've used in the description below. Bye!